Hey everybody, Jason Shadrick here with PremierGuitar.com and we're on the bus with the legendary Johnny Winter and uh, he's going to walk us through some of the very uh, legendary guitars that you might have that you take out on the road with you. So Johnny, thank you a lot for taking the time to talk to us. Oh, sure, just that would be fun. <laughs> like so, talking about my guitars. That's good. So tell me about this first one you have in here, the Laser, and uh, what uh, what you like about it and, and what makes this kind of your main guitar from night to night. Uh, it's, uh, it's really a great guitar. It doesn't get out of tune. It, it's got a really nice trebly sound. I it, it, uh, always like the way the Fender's sound and the way that Gibson's played and it does it plays like a Gibson it's got a nice thin neck uh, but it sounds more trebly than most most Gibsons do mm -hmm. it's not really like a Fender it's got its own original sound that doesn't know what the guitar really sounds like it but I got it in Austin Texas Mark Rollwine and Austin uh, makes them and I started started using it on my first uh, my first alligator record I was Used my Firebird, and the bass player Johnny B knocked the Firebird off and tore it all up. And I had the laser and hadn't used it, so I started using it and used it ever since. So I really loved the way it sounded. Is it pretty stock? You haven't modified it at all, or is this kind of bit? No, it's just the way it, just the way it came. It's perfect the way it came. I didn't want didn't need to change anything about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me a little bit about the, how the, the picks and strings that you use on this guitar. Uh, I use a, a Fender thumb pick that uh, I've been, I used to use Gibsons, but we couldn't find the Gibsons. The Fenders are just as good. It's just uh, I've always played with a thumb pick. I can't play with a flat pick at all. Mm -hmm. Is that you've been doing that since you were a kid and yeah. first started? Since I was about 12. I started using the thumb pick. My first guitar teacher played a lot of Chet Atkins stuff, and he used the thumb pick, so I just started doing it. Because he did, and I like Chet Atkins. I like to play the stuff that where you play the rhythm with your thumb and the melody with your finger. <laughs> and I do still do a lot of that in the blues stuff I do. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit about the slide you're using. Is this this is? A, they told me this is a slide you've had for a long time. Well, a long time. It's made out of a piece of drum hardware. Uh, got SR Studio Instrument Rentals in New York made it for me, and uh, I've been using that for years. Mm -hmm. Before that, I had a piece of pipe. It wasn't near as good. It rusted. I had to clean it off with steel wool before I played it every night. And it just wasn't near as good. And this one doesn't rust on the outside. And you've been holding on to that for a long time, yeah, huh? Years and years. <laughs> we actually, the Dunlap makes them now. and they, They're exactly the same. You can't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. But I've still got the same one that's made out of drum hardware. But the new ones are just as good. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. All right, well, let's take a look at your other uh, more famous guitar, the Firebird. Well, there's a guy from St. Louis, Ed Seelig, that went around to festivals uh, selling old guitars to uh, rock and roll people. And I originally liked it because it looked so different. And when I tried playing it, though, it played great and and sounded really cool. So uh, I've got a, a whole bunch of them. i got six or eight Firebirds, They're all different colors. But this is the one, the first one I got. It's a 64 Firebird. Mm -hmm. And this is still my favorite. What is it about this one as opposed to the other ones that you just really like the sound or the yeah, feel? I really or? like the sound. It just sounds cooler. All of them sound different. Each one sounds a little different. And this is the coolest one. Mm -hmm. I got a white one. This, the pick, pickups are a little bad. They're a little microphonic. It looks cooler, but it doesn't sound as good. And then I noticed the bridge on this guitar isn't the original bridge. So do you remember why you switched that out? I think Ed switched it out before I bought it. Oh, okay. And then what, what uh, use this mainly for slide? All, all, all slide. So what all tuning do you use on this one? Uh, open D, tune down to D. I play in open G sometimes too, but not on, not on the tour. Mm -hmm. I've recorded a lot of songs in open A or open G. And it's great to know that even though this is a rare vintage guitar, you still take it out on the road and play it every night. Yeah, the neck's been broken a bunch of times. We keep fixing it. Mm -hmm. And then from your guitar, you go out to what amp are you using nowadays? A Music Man? Music Man 410s, 120 watt. Mm -hmm. And that one, where did you first learn about the Music Man amps and who hipped you to those? Well, he's a guitar player. Bob Margolin was using one. I loved the way that his sounded. I was using Fender Twins before that. Well, I like I like the Music Man better, so I bought a couple of them. Mm -hmm. I've been using since about '77 or '78. 
And, and your guitar player, Paul, mentioned that you have some specific settings on, on that amp as far as the treble and the bass. So how do you adjust no bass, them? No middle, no all treble. So treble all the way up and bass all the way down. Bass all the way down, no <laughs> middle. And you use one pedal and you have it on all, all night. So tell me a little bit about that pedal. It's a chorus, uh, a chorus, boss chorus pedal. Mm -hmm. And what makes you want to, what, what does that pedal give you that you just it's keep it on? A little fuller, it has a little depth. Paul also mentioned you had a, a very good B.B. King story that we wanted to, to share with us. Well, I met B.B. when I was 17 at a, at a black club in Beaumont called The Raven, and we heard he was going to be there on the local radio station, and we went down to uh, to see him. I'd always loved B.B., and uh, I really wanted him to hear me play. Plus, I'd never played for a black audience before, and I wanted to see how what they would think of me, you know, and B.B. didn't know if I could play or not <laughs> he had no idea what i could play we were only white people there so he said he thought we were from the irs had been having tax problems <laughs> and he thought we were coming to try to collect his taxes so he i think he was just so glad that we weren't that he didn't care whether i could play or not <laughs> so he let me let me play and i went over real well mm -hmm. i played his guitar but i didn't bring my guitar with me of course Excellent. Well, Johnny, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about your, your guitars and, and your amp, and good luck with the tour. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. This is Jason Shadrick with PremierGuitar.com.